now proudly presented on SNME. That's Sunday night's main event. Patreon and free feed. We just people from the north side. Once the Timmy's hit the shore fine. Went to ready on the four ties. Heavy traffic during four five. Got a hustle on the own time. Color people every port side. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your host, your boy George Mackay, here the live the at the Card Expo, Card Expo here in Mississauga. And I'm sitting down with the Hall of Famer, the ECW OG, the legend himself, Rob Van Dam. How are you, sir? Excellent, dude. Hall of Famer. Um, I was like, should I, should I, nah, I'm just going to let him talk, dude. I'm tired. I'm tired. It's, it's been a long day of signing it's stuff. Been a, it has also been a very long month, and for me, this is the end of, like, a really long run. So, it's like, kind of like, last day of school, like, I was, like, looking forward to this coming up for a while, because I've been really overextending myself. Oh, in the name of business, all good. I'm just saying that... I'm tired that I've put myself out there for it, it, this month, but even before that, like the last six to eight weeks or so, it has been uh, a lot of uh, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy, and then so I'm thinking, boom, this one, get this one done, and then uh, and then May's looking like it's going to be a good time to rest, recuperate, enjoy being home, and then uh, what happens? My damn flight that I'm supposed to be on right now. It's pushed back so late that it's not even going to get me home. So now I got an extra day. But you know what? It could always be worse. And that's, you know, the the, the equation of perspective always will, will make you feel better if you, if, you need to, if you need to compare it to something that could be worse. So, <laughs> you know, glad to be here. Thank you very much. But I'm, I'm a little bit tired. I got you. I won't, I won't take up too much of your time. Only a couple questions. One of the questions I promised myself, if I ever had the opportunity to sit down with you and or John Cena, ECW One Night Stand 2006, main event, you versus John Cena for the World Heavyweight Championship. Being in that room, being in the, being in the Hammerstein Ballroom on that day with that crowd, what was that vibe like? I mean, watching it from home, I could tell that that was, they were going to riot if you did not win. Could you feel that in that venue that night? There's no other night in my whole career to compare to that vibration. And uh, and even like John knew going into it, he was going to be the uh, the underdog. He, he knew that they weren't going to like him. Uh, I remember him, you know, having the attitude of like, this should be fun. And he really did have fun with it. I know he did. Like he couldn't have expected. I didn't expect them to throw his shirt back. Like, who who, who would have known? Like something like that. I mean, this is this is a top wrestler in the world, and and it won't even take his shirt because uh, everything he stood for against everything that I stood for, and those were one hundred percent my people. No other night to compare to it. So that that goes down as my crowning moment, and. You know, um, it, it's because what I was fighting for was my entire career up till that point. Besides the fact it was a great match, great show, my idea, planting the seed in Vince's head, all of that made that particular night um, really cherishable and, you know, in fact, uh, the moment out of my career. It, it's amazing. And I've heard you mention that you you were one of the, the seed planters, if you will, into Vince's head for the idea. Uh, when you look back and you think about that as being your crown moment, but you were also the one that planted that seed, watched it grow. How cool is that? Well, it, it's super cool. A lot of times for me being there in WWE, my feeling of worth to the company would be go up and down all the time. I never felt like I was expendable every, every year around this time when, wrestlers get laid off after mania everyone's so shocked oh my god they let so and so go it's what happens and, and the whole time i was there you know they 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 might i might have a few good weeks it might really build up my confidence and then they would do a few things that would make me feel like wow they one they don't get me two they obviously uh don't want to get behind me you know what i mean and sometimes it could be wrestling someone that my ego or my business perspective told me wasn't worth being in the ring with me, let alone beating me. Uh, it could be promises that are put to you that are taken away. There's always, I think everybody has to deal with that to an extent. That's part of being there. At least it always has been, unless it changes uh, dramatically. 
So, um, so for, for me, like it, it, it was always just, you know, like, Hey, glad to be here. I know I got this connection with the fans. I know that's real and they can't take that away from me, but all the other stuff, it kind of turned me off from the politics, the whole office game completely. I could I could totally see that, and, and it's it's not surprising because you know what a lot of people, myself included, I was diehard fan. Still, I'm a very big fan of pro wrestling. Started a podcast because of it. Um, they didn't they didn't get Rob Van Dam, I, and I could tell that. But I really feel like um, being inducted in the Hall of Fame shows that they 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 know how impactful you were in this business. But also, I got to ask. Speaking of Hall of Fame, you Paul Heyman, you read his induction just a few weeks ago. You guys hugged. There was that embrace there. Any words exchanged in that? Like, dude, like, did you both ever think that you would be inducted in the Hall of Fame literally a few years apart from one another? He stuck his tongue in my ear, too. I don't think the camera caught it, but it was a special <laughs> moment. Yeah. Um, um, well, I mean, there was probably a time when I thought it would happen, and there was a time when I thought it would never happen. You know, like, that's uh, the whole experience of life is the, the longer – you're around the bigger picture you get. So if you're studying it, you, you just know so much more, understand so much more. And uh, I'm always telling people this, like it's crazy how people limit themselves with their mindsets and consider themselves old, like when they're like in their early thirties. Um, I just can't relate to that. At 53, I, you know, if somebody wants to call me an old man, I get it. But I don't feel that. I don't connect to that. No way. And when I'm talking about an old man, it's not it's not me. It's someone, you know, that now is, I don't know, in their 70s maybe sounds pretty old. But yeah. even that, like, I, you know, is like, I, as I have friends in the, yeah, then for sure then, right? When, But um, uh, but I wouldn't go backwards in time for, for anything. I feel better in my 50s than I did in my 40s. And it's like it, just having, like, that broader perspective and understanding everything has a bigger picture like no matter what you're talking about looking at there's always more to it mm -hmm. that you're not looking at or talking about mm -hmm. and it's so easy to uh, ignore that and just be in the moment but my philosophy no longer allows me to to do that I love your I love your philosophies on life I love everything myself um I uh I was a little bit of a uh, a weed connoisseur in my younger days my high school days fell off for a bit and then recently rediscovered because of all the benefits that was helping me and my mental state and everything like that, putting things forward and stuff like that. But uh, you being, I, I, it was funny, you were up in the Q&A and I filmed the whole Q&A. That was fantastic little 15 minutes there. But you talked about how surreal it was for you to be in Canada when it wasn't really legal here, but we were just doing it free will because, you know, some of the best weed is grown here in Canada. And that's the truth. But I mean, being free willing to see come full circle from where it was just 20 years ago to where it is now that it's so accepted and so respected. Is that wild to you? And you're kind of like one of the spokespeople for that whole culture. Yeah, it, it's definitely not wild. You know, this this is the way that it should have been always, actually, but definitely decades ago. And, and so the fact that right now in the States, down south, we still have about eight states, unless a couple changed in the last few months, that have absolutely no no marijuana legalized programs at all. The rest of the country is like slowly coming around. A lot of it's medicinal, some recreational, some are so small in the, in the jurisdictional legalization that the whole state doesn't even know they got certain little counties. The whole thing is, is ridiculous. And, and I, I, I try to use these things to compare it to make sense to people, all right? So someone asked me the other day, isn't it crazy that they used to lock people up, throw them in jail uh, over marijuana, and now it's legal everywhere? One, it's not legal everywhere. Two, they still lock people up, and, uh, and there's still people that, that suffer from it, that pay tickets, and, 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 there's, and, and the war is not over. But more importantly, is it crazy that uh, weed is legal now? Is it crazy that it's legal to be gay now? Is it crazy that it's legal to be black now? Is it crazy that it's legal to drink alcohol now? Everything was prohibited at one time. 
and we have this really conservative nucleus that we've been moving away from. And when I talk about the bigger picture, you have to see that path. You have to know what that we're, we're moving. We're not just in the moment, although it's great to be here in the moment and get that perspective, but you have to also realize that, that, that we're moving and the conservative views that try to keep us back are the ones that made the laws in the first place. Mm -hmm. They're still around. They always will be, and, um, and 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 so as as we're finally getting, seems like we're getting power to 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 adapt to common sense mm -hmm. um, and morality. But in the end, they're going to own everything anyway because mm -hmm. they they got the, they're the long term planners and thinkers. Yeah. No, I, I, that's fantastic. You have a very great sense of the whole big picture. I really do. I love the philosophies that you talked about. One more question. I'm going to let you go enjoy the rest of your evening. Being in that room, Hall of Fame night, Paul Heyman, arguably the best, one, where people are saying one of the best Hall of Fame speeches ever. Was that, was that the vibe you got? Well, uh, to be completely honest, I'm going to watch it again when I get home. Um, it was fantastic, but being there... I didn't absorb it the way that everybody else did. Mm -hmm. For me, it was almost more like, um, like I was listening to him, but it was also kind of like watching a friend of mine working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I'm watching him in, in the ring, and I'm like, okay, good move. He went and put the hat on. Good one. That got, that got over a good pot. <laughs> I'm watching it like that, yeah. and I missed a lot, so I need to go back it, because I know that he struck a lot of people in the heart, and they are telling me, best speech ever and and they and they loved it i knew being there it was like like i said like watching a good match like okay that worked you know yeah, yeah. that worked good job i want to uh re so it in. so that i can uh really give a better for first-hand perspective uh you know honestly of, of that answer because for me um I, i'm a i knew it was great but I, I feel like some of the moments passed me by i got you I got you. And actually, one question that just kind of popped in my head real quick. Brian Solomon wrote that great book on The Sheik. Yeah. Uh, I, I loved it. I read it. I actually interviewed him when he was doing his book tour about it. Fantastic read. Um, being around somebody like that and not seeing The Sheik, I guess, get the proper flowers he deserves. Uh, Sabu and myself inducted The Sheik into the Hall of Fame. It, it was an honor. Um, of course, I gave the speech. Sabu, not so much on the talking. Yeah, not so much on the talking. <laughs> Joyce was there. And um, maybe that was the last time I saw her alive. So uh, obviously it was really cool and an honor to be able to do that. And I, I just finished the damn book. I, me, actually, me too, recently. Yeah. When, so when you were up there, I was like, yeah, I just finished like two weeks ago myself. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I started so long ago, though. You too, I, I, same. I, start, I yeah. picked it up. I, it was kind of when I put it a same. couple chapters, take a break. Yeah. Not on purpose, just kind of happened. Same, yeah. I would, yeah, and I, yeah, and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to read this mob book for a while. Make it, let me get back to Sheik's book. And it was like, um, it, it's not that it was boring, but it's just that I, I do most of my reading right before I fall asleep at night. That's what puts me, same, right? Same, yeah. So you already know. You already know everything I'm going to say here. Yeah. Why even? Why do I even need to talk anymore? No, we don't know. We don't know. No, but, it, <laughs> but, but great but book. Great reading. Great book. And like I said, um, I think I had said this earlier. Like, uh, was I talking about the bigger picture? And yes, like, we're talking yeah. about the bigger picture. It, it's so easy to just think everything that in the past happened before us, so we weren't part of it. But then to see the timeline and see, like, where we really come in on that and how we really are part of that and that the past just happened, it's amazing, you know. And it's like that with, with the laws, like I said, you know, um, with prohibitions. Um, and, and it's like that with everything in history. And so seeing that in the uh, Sheik's life, his career, seeing on the timeline, you know, where I fit into that. And then it's like, that's right. I remember us going to Japan for Sabu's wedding, but, but I didn't realize at what point that was part of Sheik's story. And to be part of that was just something that it, it was kind of like, um, I don't want to say overwhelming, but I just say it was, it was very, um, mind-blowing for me yeah absolutely it was yeah absolutely well this conversation has been mind-blowing for me i got to sit down with one of my idols in person a lot of people can't say that they did that and that's legitimately truth cool. that's Appreciate legitimately you. truth Appreciate rob van damme you. hall of famer the, the goat effing show. show and maybe you could tell the people that straight talk wrestling you had a blast with me maybe they should subscribe and give the podcast a chance Dude, this is a Hall of Famer RVD. You're seeing me here on Straight Talk Wrestling. If you don't subscribe, the F are you waiting for? Peace, love, and wrestling, guys. We'll see you next week. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on that notification bell so you get notified each time we post a video. Alternatively, you can check us out on all podcast platforms and host it on Podbean. We are also available on the SNME Network. That's the Sunday Night Main Event Patreon. Please feel free to check us out there as well. And don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at underscore Straight Talk on Twitter, at Straight Talk Wrestling on Instagram, Straight Talk Wrestling on Facebook, Straight Talk Wrestling on TikTok, and of course, you can check out all our merch at ProWrestlingTees.com. I don't need a nigga cosign. Without the liquor, you become a victim. You ain't never got a pole mine. I ain't messing with this generation. Fuck your gender, I ain't got...